Hey, I'm Sam. Um, I didn't quite know where to point the camera sitting here this morning. It's all so beautiful. Um, so, it's been a while since I made a video. Um, yeah, my dog died, so I couldn't really gather my thoughts to, uh, to share anything. Um, I was really broken up for a while and um, it was very difficult. Um, and then last week I had a, a session, I have a session once a month with the person that's uh, helping me. Um, and those sessions are always difficult. Um, but this one was the most difficult, maybe because I was grieving. Um, I mean, I'm already grieving anyway. It feels like, you know, the most difficult aspect of uh, healing is the, the clarity. It's the clear seeing no longer through the veil of illusion that uh, protects us from truly connecting to the past and to how, how we feel. Um, and it does feel like the loss of everything, really. It's the loss of illusion, the loss of stories, um, the loss of the self we thought we were. And it is painful already, so to, to be going through that and then to lose Roxy was very difficult. So my last session was, was way more intense than usual. Um, and that's because I was resisting. So, you know, the sessions usually last a couple of hours, but this one was nearly three hours. And you know, the person that's helping me is trying to get to the pain and help me let it go. And if I resist through the session, there is a feeling of building tension, building resistance from me. And then they they push to the point that I break apart and uh, and then we see and it's like it's strange because I feel like a child and the emotion that is released in those sessions has been there since I was a child and so this last session, I, perhaps because they pushed harder than, than they usually do because I was resisting, but the release was huge. It was huge. Um, and, you know, afterwards we meditate for a short time and do some physical exercises to um, help the body relax and and say goodbye and so but for, for the last week afterwards you know more than ever I just woke up every morning thinking I don't know who I am like nothing works anymore no stories no strategies not hope, no plans, nothing. Nothing I say, nothing I do. It all comes from the old identity. And the, the clarity of seeing the structure of um, an identity that was a consequence of complex trauma It's, it's a strange freedom because it just doesn't feel real. And so what's real is the emptiness, the silence. That's what's real. And it just becomes impossible to persist in old habits old ways um, and so to wake up each morning and to not feel in crisis 
to not feel driven by this terror that's defined my life. Desperate, desperate terror. I must plan. I must make sure I'm ready for the worst. When that's gone, there is this this feeling of just peace. Silence, calm. And it's so strange to be able to make decisions that aren't rooted in the need to protect myself. They're not rooted in fear, they're not rooted in hope. They're just decisions. It feels very strange. Um, You know, this is a process, healing, and this feeling, I know, will not last. Because it's a lifetime's work. And progress comes in peaks and troughs. It ebbs and flows. And um, I'm used to that now. It's been a while since I've been on this path. But, you know, I, I speak in... I've spoken in previous videos, like I've always, I'm always arriving. Okay, this is it. Okay, I'm, I'm healed. I'm clear. Um, but this week I thought to myself, you know, about what I wanted to say in this video, and I just thought, God, if healing is, is anything, it's this, what I feel now. And how can I explain this? It seems impossible. You know, when I look back at my life, it seems impossible to heal. And I have, I have friends that, that uh, suffer from CPTSD. And, you know, they, they, you know we, when we speak, we say, is, is it possible? Is it possible to, to heal? Because our identity is a consequence of complex trauma. There's this, like, bifurcation. It's like you have two selves. You have the outer self. And the inner self, that secret place where you hide, protect the secret self inside. And then you have the outer self, the protector, the performance, the strategies, the self we show the world. And I used to think that they were, they were separate and if only I could find safety. If only I could find understanding in others. If only they could really see me. And then this secret place inside could live without the performance. The monster that protects me. That grotesque performance. When I was a young man, the outer self was, fear me, stay the fuck away from me, don't come near me. I don't need you anyway. And then when I transitioned, it was protect me, care for me, love me, hold me. But always see me. But it's all a request, all of it. And why? As a young man, pretending I didn't need intimacy it was never there. It was a weakness I could not afford. And I felt such shame for that. The need for love, the need for intimacy. So I buried it all. And then later in life, the request to see me, hold me, love me. It's all a request. For what? intimacy because we exist in union we live in relationship but the greatest tragedy of complex trauma is the distortion of our ability to form normal attachments we strategize to get what we need we perform if I give you this if you see this 
You give me what I need and I will take it. I will receive it and I'll take it to my center where the real me is, the hidden me, the secret self. Where there is a hole in the center that can never be filled by anything taken. So as I heal in the outer self, the strategies no longer function and the outer self crumbles, it reveals something hidden that isn't separate. It's not two identities, it's one, it's two aspects of the same self. And there is that need, that raw center. But that is also a dysfunctional part of identity because intimacy is not found by taking anything. It's found in opening and joining with union. And so it all has to crumble, inner and outer. And I think that's why the last session was so difficult, because I realised what I was protecting. And actually for the first time in this session, I just completely shut down, almost to, into a state of like a, a catatonic state because as I was pushed and resisted and then broke I just shut down and said it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what doesn't matter The longing for intimacy, the longing to be loved. That was met with hostility when I was a kid. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I don't matter, is what I was saying. I don't matter. The shame of needing to be loved, cared for, doesn't matter. doesn't matter. Maybe we're all protecting ourselves from feeling that. It is a tragedy to live one's life as a performance. Whether it's a consequence of trauma, it's always a consequence of unworthiness. We think we're not enough, so we pretend it's not a life. And what we long for, everybody longs for, intimacy, shared experience, to be known is not possible if you are pretending to be someone. And that is a tragedy. It's a shame to live your life that way. never being known. And when I look back on the strategies and performances I used, they were grotesque and I knew it. I feel bereft after social situations performing. Inwardly desolate. So it all has to crumble. It all has to fall away. And then you're here.
So one day, I'm just going to sit here and say nothing for half an hour, and you can just listen to the babbling brook. It seems strange to even talk here. I have no poem today. So, the healing continues. You know, I think we are unknowable. I know I've said this before. We are unknowable. And when we accept that, and do away with the illusions and certainties of our stories, life really begins. You cannot fill a cup that's already full. A vessel. And we are a vessel. The soul is a vessel. So how can you really be found by each moment? How can each moment know you? If you're full of ideas that you already know, you can't be, you can't be reached by each moment, let alone another person. You have to empty. It's a painful process. And I keep saying, don't ever give up. But in a way, you have to get to the point where you do give up. You have to get to the point where nothing works anymore. No strategies, nothing. And then you stop surviving and start living. So, thank you for watching. Well, that was a bit of a rambling one, but I've had a few weeks to think and uh, probably got too much to say. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.